as the president of the United States, president elect. Oh, what a moment, what a moment. I'm 65 years old. Oh, brother, we've been out here to struggle a long time. A product of three historically black colleges, Elizabeth City State University, North Carolina Central, and Virginia State, before I came to Syracuse to get my PhD. I'm a 1960s guy. I uh, used to eat with Dr. Martin Luther King. I've been arrested for civil rights. I remember walking in colored water fountains. I remember the entrance to movie theaters. Remember when our folk had to go in the back and reach in a hole out of a wall to get food from restaurants when we couldn't go in the front door. This ain't been that long ago. And of course, grew up in segregation and in the South. And of course, remember Dr. King's great, I have a dream to speak. And this one caught me off guard. But four years ago, when he gave the Democratic National Convention keynote speech, I said, oh my God, look what has surfaced. And all so I have to get back into my notes because I met Senator Barack Obama and Michelle when they were in Chicago in 1992, the summer. They were he was getting going as a community organizer, and I was in town as a naval officer with the Navy's Great Lakes cruise, the USS Samuel Elliott Morris, and we tied up at Navy Pier, and we took the the best crust of the African American community on a cruise out in in, in Great Lakes in Lake Lake Michigan. And the Bob Johnson, late Robert Johnson, who was the editor of Jet Magazine, was part of that cruise that day, along with about 300 people. And I got to go back and look at my notes, because I think on board the ship that day was Senator Barack Obama and Michelle. In 1992, summer, around July, in Chicago, Illinois. And I think even he visited, might have did the cruise, but I'll go back, I got a whole log of all of the guests. And I just thought about this last night in my busy life. But I will say this, is that... I was watching television, and when he got the electoral count, that basically officially said he would be the Democratic, he would be the president-elect of the United States of America, and they switched to Ebenezer Baptist Church in Atlanta, Georgia, and those brothers and sisters were shouting in that church, and the choir was singing, God might not come when he wants you, when, he, when you would like for him to come, but he right on down, I just broke down and cried. I mean, it was tears. I said, oh my God, look at this. And after I recovered from that, they switched to Washington, D.C. The brothers and sisters they were surrounding the White House, I lost it again. So, I mean, this is just incredible. And of course, he's, he is going to become a great president. Yeah. And we need him at this time in American history. The country is financially ruined from the eight years of the Bush administration and the Republicans. And we need dynamite, innovative leadership. And he's bringing to Logical sophistication yeah. to this job that everybody else has never brought before. Right. So, Senator, Senator Barack Obama, who's no longer a senator today because he resigned his position today, the president elect of the United States of America. What story? What story? Yes. Yeah. Thank you for okay. your thoughts. All righty. Good deal. All right. still doubts 
that America is a place where all things are possible. There's still wonders. If the dream of our founders is alive in our time. Who still questions the power of our democracy. Tonight is your answer. It's the answer told by lines that stretched around schools and churches in numbers this nation has never seen. A people who waited three hours and four hours, many for the first time in their lives, because they believed that this time must be different, that their voices could be that difference. It's the answer spoken by young and old, rich and poor, Democrat and Republican, black, white, Hispanic, Asian, Native American, gay, straight, disabled and not disabled, Americans who sent a message to the world that we have never been just a collection of individuals or a collection of red states and blue states. We are and always will be the United States of America. What we've already achieved gives us hope for what we can and must achieve tomorrow. This election had many firsts and many stories that will be told to generations, but one that's on my mind tonight is about a woman who cast her ballot in Atlanta. She is a lot like the millions of others who stood in line to make their voice heard in this election, except for one thing. Ann Nixon Cooper is 106 years old. She was born just a generation past slavery, a time when there were no cars on the road or planes in the sky. And someone like her couldn't vote for two reasons, because she was a woman and because of the color of her skin. Tonight, I think about all that she's seen throughout the century in America. The heartache and the hope, the struggle and the progress. The times we were told that we can't, and the people who pressed on with that American creed, yes, we can. At a time when women's voices were silenced and their hopes dismissed, she lived to see them stand up and speak out and reach for the battle. Yes, we can. When there was despair in the Dust Bowl, depression across the land, she saw a nation conquer fear itself with a new deal, new jobs, new sense of common purpose. Yes, we can. When the bombs fell on our harbor, and tyranny threatened the world. She was there to witness a generation rise to greatness. The democracy was saved. Yes, we can. She was there for the buses in Montgomery, the hoses in Birmingham, a bridge in Selma, a preacher from Atlanta who told the people that we shall overcome. Yes, we can. A man touched down on the moon. A wall came down in Berlin. The world was connected by our own science and imagination. And this year, in this election, she touched her finger to a screen, cast her vote. Because after 106 years in America, through the best of times and the darkest of hours, she knows how America can change. Yes, we can. America, we have come so far. We have seen so much. But there's so much more to do. So tonight, let us ask ourselves, if our children should live to see the next century, if my daughters should be so lucky to live as long as Ann Nixon Cooper, what change will they see? What progress will we have made? This is our chance to answer that call. This is our moment. This is our time to put our people back to work and open doors of opportunity for our kids, to restore prosperity and promote the cause of peace, to reclaim the American dream and reaffirm that fundamental truth that out of many we are one, that while we breathe we hope, and where we are met with cynicism and doubt and those who tell us that we can't, we will respond with that timeless creed that sums up the spirit of a people. Yes, we can. Thank you. God bless you, and may God bless the United States of America.
It's a new day.